welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma, also known as Made in the Moment. And today I'm going to show you how to make this knit tie. It's fairly simple. It's mostly just a rectangle with a little bit of a decrease and then another rectangle on the other side. If you've never ever knit before, I would suggest checking out my How to Knit for Beginners playlist before you dive into this project. That'll teach you the basic stitches, how to cast on, how to cast off, and how to keep your tension even. Other than that, I would say this is a pretty beginner friendly pattern, like I said, because it's basically just one long rectangle. If you like this tutorial and want to see what else I make, you can follow me on Instagram or TikTok. I'm much more active there. And feel free to leave a comment below of what kinds of things you want to see me make next or other ideas for videos that you want to see. If you make this and post it anywhere, please tag me at Made in the Moment. I always love seeing the things that you guys make. It's really inspiring to me and is super fun. That is all I have for you. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So what you're going to need for this project is a fingering weight yarn. I am using this yarn from Stitch and Story, but they have recently gone out of business. So uh, I can't recommend this yarn to you, unfortunately, but I do really like this yarn, which is the Lillian yarn from Dirty Water Dye Works. I would recommend 2.25 millimeter knitting needles. You can obviously change the size depending on your desired gauge. This yarn actually calls for 3.5 millimeter needles, but I like the knit to be a little bit tighter for the tie. Then you're going to need a measuring tape and scissors and a yarn needle. I actually don't know where mine is at the moment, but I'll find it before I need it. This is a fairly simple eight row repeat. I'm going to put on the screen the repeat written out in words so you can have that for your reference. I am using the double pointed needle just because these are the nicest needles that I have in this size and because it's a small project, so I can hold them on here pretty nicely anyway. So I'm going to start off with a slip knot place that onto one of my needles. And then I'm gonna take my fingers, place them inside the yarn here, and go through, grab that through, pull the loop over, and tighten. Under, around, through, over, and tighten. This is the long tail cast on. I'm just kind of quickly going through it right now. If you want a more in-depth and slower tutorial on how to do this as with a uh, bigger yarn so it's easier to see, then you can watch my long tail cast on video. It's really short and it will show you the basics of how to do this cast on. But I'm going to cast on 16 stitches. If you want to make your tie wider or thinner, make sure you do a multiple of four for the stitch pattern to work. So I have my 16 stitches. And like I said, this is an eight row repeat and it is in clusters of four stitches. So the first row is just a knit one, purl one. So to do the knit stitch, I'm going to insert my needle from front to back in the stitch. I'm going to yarn around Pull that yarn around through and then drop the stitch off the end of the left needle. Then I'm going to move my yarn to the front, insert from back to front, yarn around, pull through, and drop that stitch off the left needle. Again, that is insert from front to back, yarn around, pull through and drop the stitch off the needle. Purl, insert from back to front, bring the stitch, bring the yarn around and throw that off the edge. I don't like to be so self-referential all of the time, but I do have an in-depth how to knit and how to purl video. If you want those slowed down even more, I highly recommend those if you are a beginner or to just search around on YouTube and find whatever video resonates with you. But those are the two basic stitches you're going to need for this project. So I'm just doing a knit one, purl one until the very end of the row. Then at the end of the row, I'm going to turn my work and repeat the same thing. So the first two rows of the repeat are the same thing going to go back, knit one, and purl one. Okay. 
and then for the third row you are going to purl one and knit three. So we're going to start off with a purl and then three knit stitches. Then another purl and three knit stitches. And then turn your work and you're essentially going to be doing the opposite of what you just did. So we're going to be purling three and knitting one. So on the right side, you'll end up with three knit stitches and one purl. If that's confusing to you, then ignore me. You'll understand as we go on. So purl three. and knit one. So that was your fourth row. And then the fifth and sixth rows are actually going to be the same as the first and second, which is just a knit one, purl one repeat. This is the end of my fifth row. I'm going to turn my work and my sixth row again is a knit one, purl one repeat. Then for row seven, the four stitch repeat is knit two, purl one, knit one. So that is knit two, purl one, and then knit one. Knit two, purl one, and then knit one. Then when you turn your work, it's going to be basically making the stitches as established. So purl one, knit one, purl two. So we're going to do purl one, knit one, purl two. And that is your eight row repeat. Doesn't look like much now, but I will show you one with a few more repeats done. So just for reference, this is four repetitions of the stitch. This is what it should start to look like. You got these kind of diamond shapes. This is the right side and the wrong side looks like this. Also for your reference, the width of this, the width of the tie is just around two and a quarter inches. And after four repetitions, I have about three inches. So I'm just going to keep going until my tie measures about 21 inches. So I have finished about 21 inches of the seersucker stitch and now I am at the end of one of my eight row repeats. So my next row is going to be knit one purl one ribbing. What I'm going to do here is start decreasing. I'm going to start by doing a slip slip knit on the first two stitches to basically knit them together. So I'm going to insert my needle as I normally would, but instead of knitting, I'm just going to slip the stitch onto my right needle. Then I'm going to slip the second stitch onto my right needle as well and insert my left needle through the front of both of these stitches and then knit as normal. Then my next stitch is going to be a purl stitch. So I'm going to purl and then knit and continue this pattern until I have two stitches left at the end of the row. So 
I have two stitches left and my next stitch is going to be a purl stitch. So what I'm going to do is insert my right needle into the front of both of these stitches as if I were going to purl and then just purl both of them together. And I'm going to turn my work and continue each stitch as established. So that is knit one, purl one all the way across the row with no decreases. I am going to repeat that exact same pattern where I slip, slip, knit the first two stitches together. And then for the next stitch, I'm going to purl and then knit. So this is the opposite of the stitch that's underneath it until I have two stitches left at the end. And this lands on a purl stitch again, so I'm going to insert my needle through both of these last two stitches, yarn around and purl together. And then I'm going to continue as established, starting with a knit stitch, purl all the way to the end. At this point, you should have 12 stitches on your needle, and I'm going to repeat that again. Slip, slip, knit. And then purl, knit one, purl one to the end of the row until there's two stitches left. And then purl these two stitches together. And starting with a knit stitch, I'm going to knit one purl one across the row on the wrong side. And then I'm going to repeat that pattern again till I have eight stitches and on the wrong side again knit one purl one across the row and this is what your decreases should look like on the wrong side and on the right side now from this point on, you're going to continue in seed stitch. So we're going to start with a purl stitch here. This is the right side, purl one, knit one, purl one, until the end of the row. And then on the wrong side, you're going to knit one, purl one. So again, that is purl one, knit one on the right side, and then knit one, purl one on the wrong side. And I am just going to continue in the seed stitch until the entirety of my tie is approximately 55 inches long. Obviously find a length that works for you. And once you get to the end, I'll show you how to cast off and how to add a couple finishing touches to the rest of the tie. So because the fit of the tie is going to be very different depending on like how long you want it to be, where exactly you want it to sit, I would recommend once you get to kind of pretty close to the end that you tie it and try it on and then finish knitting 
while it's tied so that you can really see how long you want it to be. I will insert a little tutorial at the end of this video on how to do kind of a basic knot for a tie. You can also find hundreds of other videos online showing you how to do different kinds of knots. I have also marked on the tie part where I want to add my little, it's like the little thing that you put right here so you can slip the, the tail end of the tie into the back and it doesn't stick out from the side. So I've just marked a spot that is significantly higher than where the lowest end of this part of the tie will be. So when I wear this around my neck, this part goes down to about here and I have the stitch markers here. For your reference, this is nine inches from the bottom of the tie, which is where I have put my stitch markers. This might be different or the same for you depending on how you want your tie to fit. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to cast off. I'm just going to do a simple stretchy cast off with all knit stitches. So I'm going to knit my first two stitches and then insert my left needle through the front of the two stitches on my right needle and knit those together. So I've now cast off one stitch. I'm going to knit the next stitch insert my left needle into those two stitches and knit those together and just continue down the row. And once you knit your final two together, you're just going to grab some scissors and trim the edge, trim the end and just pull that loop through. Tighten it a little bit. And this is what your edge should look like, nice and clean. And now before I do anything else, I'm just going to weave these ends in really quickly. So to do that, I'm going to thread my yarn needle and just sort of loop around the edge here. And then I'm going to go back the opposite way. And trim the end. And the last thing you're going to do is make that little... Okay, I just looked it up and the thing here is called the keeper loop, which is to, I guess, keep this part of the tie behind it when you're wearing it. So you're going to flip your tie over to the wrong side. And at the point where you have your stitch markers, just make a quick slip knot and you're going to pick up four stitches along the edge here. So to do that, you're going to insert your needle, pull that loop through and tighten and then pick up three more stitches along the edge. And I am going to make enough rows of seed stitch for this to lay flat across to here. So after I've picked up my stitches, I'm gonna turn my work and starting with a knit stitch, I'm going to knit one, purl one to the end of the row. And just so it's not in the way, I'm gonna take the stitch marker out. So in the last row we did knit one, purl one, and now we are going to do a row of purl one, knit one. And repeat. So 
This is the length of my keeper loop. It is slightly smaller than the width of my tie. So my tie is two inches across and the keeper loop is just about one and a half inches if you're including the needles. This is because I have one more row to go with my cast off and then I want it to be hidden. I don't want it to stretch out over the edge of the tie at all. So I'm just going to do the same cast off that I did for the edge of the tie where I'm going to knit and then knit two together. And again, I'm just going to trim the end here, pull that through. Taking my yarn needle again, I'm going to thread it. And I really want to make sure that this is not twisted at all. So I'm going to lay this across just like that. And I'm going to do kind of an invisible seam. I do need to take out this stitch marker now that I know where I want this to line up, just so it's out of the way. But I'm going to insert my needle like this. And then into here. Kind of just going back and forth. Great, and now we have it nice and secure. I'm going to tie the end off here and then weave it in. And now the only end we have left is this one from where I picked up stitches, so I'm going to weave that in as well. And there it is. So the way that this is going to work is you can tuck the end here just right into that and it will keep it hanging behind it. That is everything you're going to need to do for your tie. I will insert some clips of me wearing it. If you make this and post about it, then please tag me at Made in the Moment on Instagram and TikTok. I love seeing what you guys make, and I think this one will be a really fun one to see how people style it. So go ahead and follow me on those platforms if you haven't already. DM me your pictures, tag me in them. Would love to see them. If you like this video and want to see more tutorials like this, then make sure you subscribe to my channel and leave a comment on what kinds of things you want to see me make next. Thank you all so much for watching and have a great rest of your day. Here is a quick tutorial on how I like to tie my ties. This is obviously not the only way to do it. This is just how my dad taught me and how I like to do it. So I start with the shorter end on the left side and the longer end on the right side. This can take a little bit of kind of finagling to figure out exactly where you want the tie to hit after you've tied it. And then I'm going to take the wider side and cross it over the thinner side like this. Then I'm going to bring it around the back and cross it all the way around again. So I've basically wrapped all the way around one time. Then I'm going to pull the wider side through this little notch right here between the two ties. So now we have the tie wrapped all the way around and then it's sitting over kind of like this. And the last thing you're going to do is just through this top layer right here, you're going to thread this part through. 
And then it's just a matter of kind of adjusting the knot and how it sits. And then also adjusting how tight the tie is using the shorter end. And then most ties are going to have this keeper loop, which you can thread the thinner end through to keep it behind the rest of the tie. Like I said, there's like a million ways to tie ties. You can do fancier knots. There's probably different ways to do this kind of simple knot, but that's just the way I do it. So I hope that is helpful and enjoy tying. fairly simple as well to extend with lengthen to I'm in school right now and I don't know who cares who cares where is my other needle oh I'm sitting on it ah, fuck. great now my tie smells like cider